Montgomery Wards Airline Television Model 94 GSE-3015 This set uses a 7 inch round tube Missing the knobs Bezel bent right there case is pretty rough, starting to come apart there, the covering is. Pretty rough looking old cabinet. 1949. These were sold by Montgomery Ward stores. Remember those when they used to be in business. The airline was their trademark for their Appliances, TVs especially, I'm not sure about it. Maybe other appliances too, but they called their TVs airline. Has a carrying handle on top. It's considered a portable TV back in its day. And this, the back has hinges, opens up. Uh, this set uses two chassis. Uh, the bottom chassis is signal circuitry, tuner, audio, and then the top chassis is a deflection circuit. Probably vertical and horizontal, I'm not sure until I get into it. But they plug together right here. Got just a plug that couples the two chassis together. Does need a lot of tender loving care. Pretty rough looking, but we're not going too concerned about that. We're gonna we'll worry about the chassis first and try to get the set going. Then the cabinets secondary. We'll do something if we can get the TV part working. One of the unique features of this set is this button right here. It says telephoto control. And in looking at the schematic, I think all that button did was it increased the width and the height, just blowed the picture up, made a, the center of the picture look bigger. Of course, you lost the sides and, and the top and bottom, but but it made the made the picture look larger when you push that button. So that's that's kind of unique. There's a Montgomery Ward crest. See, it says MW in the red part there. I have the Sam's photo fact on this set. It's dated September 1950. So I'm assuming this is a 49 model. Could be an early 50, but. Anyway, in that range, $49.50. This has all the schematics. There's the layouts. Shows you where all the tubes are, and etc. Parts list. So the first thing we'll do, like we do on all the old TVs that we're trying to restore, we'll check the picture tube. If the tube is good, then we'll proceed. If it's no good, then that's a problem because these tubes are hard to find. Price is not cheap if you find one, so we'll have to check the tube. If it's, if it's not good, we're going to have to think about whether we want to proceed. Good news is that the picture tube is drawn current. We have filaments. And we go to heater to cathode shorts, it says good. G1 short says good. The only issue that it has is a cutoff. And normally, you adjust it here. Normally you want the cutoff to adjust to that little black square. And this one, that's all the way up and it's not quite to the square. 
after letting the tube warm up a little, the cutoff's doing better. It's still all the way up. It's not quite up in the black square. So, so even though that emission says good, our picture may not be that good on it. Probably what I'll do is like I do with most of these old tubes, I'll hook it up to a working chassis and just see what the picture looks like. But according to the checker, tube's okay. Pretty dirty as you can see, so the first thing I'm gonna do is clean some of this crud off and, and I'll check the tubes. I already checked the picture tube, it's okay. But I'll check these other tubes and and just look it over real good. If if nothing looks obviously burnt or anything underneath, then we may power it up just to see what we get. You never know it might work. I doubt it, but, but you never know. Here's what I use to do the initial cleaning on the chassis. I have this little wand that attaches to the shop back and a little small brush on the end. It works really well to get around those crevices. Well, here's the chassis after I got them cleaned off a little. Uh, rust on this one, but that's because it sets in the bottom of the set. This one really looks good because it sets at an angle up on the side of the set. Okay, I have the tube tester out. I'm gonna check all the tubes in the set. And when I'm doing, when I'm doing this, I'm gonna just make sure that the right tube is in the right place. So I have this Sam's here that tells me and I can look on it and confirm the tube number and that that's it's in the correct position so sometimes people pull tubes out and just stick a different one back in so I always like to make sure it does have the right tube in it this is the first original tube that I ran across I've checked for about eight tubes and this is an original airline tube and you can see it's got the number on the top, 6AU6. Poor old spider, he got in the wrong section. This is a high voltage circuit board here. I have pulled loose so I can do some voltage checks. Done some preliminary tests and I have DC voltage coming out of the rectifiers. Uh, this one. And that one there. But my oscillator, Hardzone oscillator, is not running. And I'm doing just some tests that I could do easily. Uh, the 6X5 supposed to have around 600 volts on pin 8. It's on this high voltage board right here. So I was able to tip it up enough to check that voltage and I've got about 250 volts instead of 600. So this is a high voltage oscillator tube here. I can't get under it as you can see it won't tip up enough to where I can check any voltages on it so I can see this this chassis is going to be a challenge to work on uh, the good news is I do have some noise in the speaker tuners not working it doesn't seem to be but but I do have some sound coming out of the speaker rushing noise of course no no picture no raster on the tube because that oscillator is not running. Here's one place where these test sockets will really come in handy. So with this test socket, I can just plug it in here on the top, plug the tube into the test socket, and I can check voltages, resistance, whatever I want to check here on top. Just like that. And there's my pins, that's pin one, pin eight, have them marked. So, it's gonna make it a lot easier. Well, that's all the time we have for part one. Stay tuned for part two when we'll 
do some troubleshooting on the chassis and see if we can get this set working again. Thanks for watching. We hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button. And we'd love it if you would subscribe to our channel. Thanks.